Hey everyone, how's it going? Long time no see. It is so good to be back. For the last 20 years since we've lived at this location, we have not had any form of high speed internet and we just joined this century. I know, hard to believe. We now have fiber internet, which is totally awesome by the way. Way better than dial up. So now I can go back to sharing things with you on YouTube and catching up on your projects as well, because that's the sad thing. I've gotten behind on everybody else's stuff too, because I can't download anything either. I used to work in a facility that the building offered free public Wi-Fi, so I would go in, hit my upload, and by the time my shift was over, uh, the upload would be done. Waiting on the mower to pass. Pretty typical, anytime I hit the record button, Yeah. So I'm back and I realized I had never shared with you what actually happened to the double cab that caused the fire. So that's where we're going to start. We're going to wrap that one up. We'll be working on Old Pickle, which you can see out the windshield there. And of course, vintage campers, art, and the usual things on this channel. Thanks for staying with me for this interim where it's been kind of sketchy for uploads. I truly appreciate it. So without further ado, let's find out what happened to Old Rusty here. Well, all in all, not too bad in the carnage department. I had some wiring that melted, a couple pieces of that. Uh, we had that spring that stretched and broke, or broke and then stretched, or something. Uh, one of those little clips that goes in the uh, fan shroud to hold your plug wires is all melted up. Uh, a couple burn up plug wires, certainly wouldn't be reusing that. And then this one split all the way through where it burned it up. And I'm not gonna trust that guy. So I put a new distributor cap on. It's like, this one's actually uh, probably fine, but if it's cracked, we certainly don't wanna start more trouble than we already have. So not too bad. I feel very, very fortunate uh, <laughs> to only have this much damage and that much stuff to replace. And I can't get a rebuild kit for the carb that's on it so if we're going to start it, hopefully, here in just a second and see if we can find the leak. Uh, my other theory is that it got hot, uh, warmed up, truck warmed up, and when it warmed up a linkage or something started leaking on uh, the carburetor that's in it. Uh, we know things expand with heat, so if that's the case, that could have been what caused our leak. Uh, this one... We will, if, if we find a leak and it starts leaking and it wasn't just some fluke thing that happened, I'll put that one in the uh, ultrasonic. We'll get it cleaned up and ready to throw on. But let's see if we can start and have a fire or not have a fire. Fire extinguisher has been replaced. It's ready to go. I actually have left it unclipped here so you can just <laughs> pull it off. So hopefully we don't even have to use it. After I kind of got everything cleaned off with the air hose, it looks like the fire, my confirmation is correct, was concentrated right around in this area. So I'm starting to lean towards maybe a linkage is leaking on that carburetor. Unfortunately, I can't get a rebuild kit for that guy. <laughs> so, yeah, we may be pulling that off and doing a little more work on it, but I want to set the camera back a ways so that if I do have another fire, I at least don't have to topple the camera. Uh, I have not replaced the fuel line. I left the bad, the quote unquote bad ones, the original ones on, on purpose so that if they do leak, we'll be able to see them. But when I tried to crank it over without the ignition hooked up, uh, we didn't get anything. I cranked and cranked and cranked on it. So we're all hooked up. Let's try and start it and see what happens. Uh, I took the air hose and sprayed all of that fire extinguisher crap out of there and then shot backed all around. But over here I'm noticing there's, I can see some of it now kind of hanging out. So I need to get the shot back back in there and kind of sweep all of that out of there. Uh, I also ripped one of the slinky hoses as Dalton calls them, fresh air return. Uh, so yeah, I got replacements for those we need to fix, but right now let's see what we get. Maybe I don't have a wire hooked up. 
make sure I didn't damage the fuel pump while we're kind of replacing lines and make sure it's actually working. So I have run the line that would go up to the carburetor down into a good old Pizza X cup. So I'm going to go crank it over. Probably could just crank it over by hand. There it goes. So fuel pump is working. We could crank it over, but with the uh, battery, but it's, it's working. Uh, upon closer inspection, uh, ignore where I have cut this here. We've got good sunlight right here, so you should be able to see it. Uh, you couldn't really see it when you're just looking at it, but when you turned it, this was against the distributor wall, and there's a little screw and a kind of a a keeper that keeps it up against uh, the wall there and it was all melted. So I've taken that out and rewired that and put it back in there. Let's see if it'll start now. I gotta tighten that belt, but it definitely fried the electronic ignition. As soon as I got the points in there, it started right up. So, yeah, I just put all that together in here, but that's fried. Right there's where it melted it together. Done, fixed for six bucks. Well, we got nothing, nary a week. So I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> the bad thing is I have no idea what's actually wrong or what failed. So it'll happen again. Let's hope not, but. So as you might imagine, all of that drama just made me a little bit gun shy, especially not being able to find the problem. And that just bugs me. Uh, I really was irritated <laughs> that I couldn't just pinpoint what was wrong. So, it may happen again, it may not happen again, but I want to know about it if it happens. And so, I bought this little uh, backup camera for like an RV or a truck. And uh, this one's supposed to take quite a bit of heat. And it has, uh, I believe it has night vision. And it was relatively cheap. I'll put a link to the one I used if it is successful and you can uh, check it out. So it just has a little screen you put inside. And then this hooks your cigarette lighter. I'll show you what I have for a cigarette lighter too. You'll all be jealous. And then this is your little camera that just goes in the back. So that, that's going to be plenty small to go back in the engine bay. And these just hook to your battery. And that hooks into that. And basically looks like it's a pretty simple setup. Uh, the antenna to it is here. So we should be able just to run that from where the license plate kind of comes in. Just run it up here across and over to the battery. That's a nice thing about a bus. It's just right there. We don't have to run it into the cab or anything. Yeah, I'll show you where my cigarette lighter is. So my awesome uncle built these for Volkswagen buses. And he had a little, little pattern he had out of cardboard that he would cut them out of. And they're just uh, bolted to the the uh, speedo column there but that's your 12 volt charge port pretty cool and it doesn't take away from the look of the bus at all really and it's out of the way so that's where mine is you don't have to run it there but you could make something similar get a good look of it and it's open on the bottom too so let's go see 
what kind of modification we're gonna have to do to this little guy to get that to fit in there. We we'll probably won't be lucky enough, it'll just bolt up. I can tell you it's gonna be too narrow. It's not bad though. Weld a washer on either side of it, maybe. I'll go down over those two bolts. <laughs> Wonder what the return policy is. Uh, if you weld uh, to the factory bracket, probably not good. And then uh, we'll just have to make sure we're aimed tipped down far enough to clear the electrical of the uh, license plate light. I think that's gonna work just fine. And then we can probably even feed the electrical, zip tie it to that and run it right over. So let me go get a couple washers and we'll see uh, how we're gonna make that work. I think if we just weld one to each side, we got it. <laughs> Come in here to the uh, parts store, to the medium washer bin. Mr. D labeled this row for me. The nut, medium nut bin. The nutty bin. Yeah, those are all kind of big. The hole on those probably isn't big enough to go around the bolt. Well, we'll grab a couple of them anyway. And then uh, we'll pull a couple medium ones out. Couple of those. Yep, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so kind of what I'm thinking is it's like the Mad Hatter. If you do something like that, does that work? I don't think those are big enough to go over the bolt. We'll take them out there. Well, not my prettiest of welds, but I think it'll hold okay. If it fits okay on there, fits nice, uh, we'll take it back off and throw a little spray paint on it. At least make it all the same color. Hey, we did okay for our first try. Yeah, I think that will work perfectly. Now yeah, we're talking. Okay, so this one says, don't cut it, it's the antenna. <laughs> so we're gonna kind of zip tie all of that up and just follow this uh, plastic electrical housing all the way around to the battery. Okay, that is all in there. I have the other half in my hand and my zip ties I just have loosely attached over there. So let's jump in up here, get the door open, oops, hopefully that still works. Yeah, let's see what happens here. I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to want this thing. I don't know if it's better to have it, that's probably, that kind of blocks the mirror. I don't want to put it there because the safaris. I don't know if it's going to stick to the dash or not. Sorry, the camera's moving with me. I don't know that I really like it there, but I think that's probably our only real option at this point. Okay. That little adjuster on the back. Rut row. Rut row, Shaggy. <laughs> rookie. Got a rookie installer here. I think I was turning it the wrong way. I have a knack for doing that. 
So if we're right there, is there a cover on that? There's a green sticker. Come on. No, no, come on, come on. There we go. I should just leave that on there. Now let's turn it on and see what we get. I like it. It's pretty good. Pretty good image. It doesn't take away too much. It's just one more gauge I gotta watch out for. I think if I put it right here, I would hit it all the time and steering. So I'm just gonna have to make a note when I check my mirror, check that. So let's go shut the deck lid and see, uh, see what the camera is like. Wonder how bumpy it is going down the road. <laughs> so I need to go back and make sure we tighten that camera up. We'll put some uh, Loctite Red in it eventually. And I'll probably put either safety wire or something around it so it can't come off of there. That would stink big time. So I, I'm very happy with this purchase. Uh, we'll see how it does going down the road, but sitting in the carport does great. All right, I got those hoses on and it does feel like this is a, is staying a little bit warm. So it's keeping power. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it for right now where I can unhook it from that little connector that goes to the battery, but uh, we'll have to wire that to the key. I don't want that to stay on, run my battery down. These are designed for RVs. So they have like a house battery that would keep it charged. So it's, it's not hot, but it's just warm. I just kind of bumped it and noticed it was warm and it's not on up front. So I definitely think it's draining, pulling power. So we'll just unhook it for now. I'll cut all these zip ties off and we'll make sure our camera angle uh, is good. I did run a zip tie back behind the bracket so that if it falls, it's gonna catch by the wire, hopefully, and just hold it there, keep it from falling into the engine. So I think we got it buttoned up as, as good as it's gonna get. So let me cut those, tighten this one up, tighten these zip ties here up, and then we'll uh, take it down the road and see how she does. The nice thing about the buses is you got the vents on the side, so you get some light kind of coming through there during the daytime at least. Worst case scenario, we'll wire a light back here, but bottom line, if the screen gets really bright, <laughs> you've got a fire, it's time to pull over. So I guess it's a good thing the screen's kind of dark in a way. Your eye will be drawn to it if it starts, you know, flaming. So we'll button that all up and go for a spin. So that little camera's been hooked up there for a little over an hour. Let's see uh, what kind of damage we can do. So I either have to put you in a bumpy tripod or a bumpy stand or just turn it back on here in a bit. I didn't make it very far. I'm to the neighbors. Look at what I found. I don't know if we can get it to do it. It's going to drip. Did you see it? Those are fairly new rubber boots on there as well. I have new ones. See if we can get it to drip one more time. It's working on it. See it? There it went. So I'm literally, <laughs> my house is like, if you could see through these trees, you could see my house. We made it about, I don't know, quarter mile. Yeah, it's dripping pretty good now. 
Well, that is definitely uh, probably what was the initial issue. I'm actually glad that happened because I feel a lot better seeing something leak. The funny part about those, those were changed not that long ago. When I say not that long ago, within the year. Um, so it'd be nice if you could buy stuff that lasted a while. <sighs> you know. <laughs> and when I looked at them, when I cleaned everything up in here, I did actually loosen the hose clamps and look at everything and it looked fine, but they are definitely split somewhere. So it's sucking air and it's not gonna run correctly. The funny thing is it sat right here and ran really well. Bummer. And it ran up the driveway. Fantastic. Ran out the road. Great. I was like, man, this thing's running fantastic. <sighs> Gotta love it. I was thinking we might be able to get a little better picture if I put some magnets where I welded my washers, just epoxied some magnets. And then we could stick it over here so it'd be kind of shooting in that direction towards the engine. I'll uh, drive it around for a bit with that like it is and see how it goes. It might be nice to get a, a little bit wider angle though by throwing the camera out further. Yeah, we'll play around with it. So I moved our camera on a set of rare earth magnets up there from back here. Back here when you have it down, when the lid is dropped down, it just puts it pretty close so your only vision is like right in here. So I stuck it up on top. Let's go see what it kind of looks like now. Oh yeah, I like that better. So that's what we get now. I like it. So we'll leave it there and I'm gonna go ahead and probably zip tie it loosely as well as put the rare earth magnets. I don't think it would fall off. It's pretty snug. I use the big fat ones. Yeah, I like that. That'll work. Sweet. So after I ran that for a couple of weeks, I decided I kind of liked seeing the engine while I was driving. So I just went and got an LED light. I did not have to modify that. I bought it at O'Reilly's. It came just like that and it fit perfectly on the license plate bolts and then the camera is still mounted on the rare earth magnets you can see it right here the cool thing is if i want to back a trailer up or something i could just take it out from there stick it on the deck lid pointing down to the hitch i can actually use it as a backup camera which is kind of cool and this light is enough light if you were actually broke down on the side of the road. As long as you had 12 volts, you actually have a light to see what you're doing. And the other cool thing is, at night, you get a decent view of what's going on back there. I love it. It has worked absolutely perfect. I've been running it in the bus for probably, I don't know, 10 months, something like that. This worked great. I highly recommend it. I should have done this a long time ago. It's awesome. You can see everything you need to see. And the vibrations of the of the bus ride and everything don't seem to affect it at all. It works perfect. Way better than I expected it to. And I have used it as a backup camera a time or two. I've taken it, taken the magnets off and stuck it on the on the bottom of the deck lid so that I could back up to it. Nice having that comfort level of being able to just look in the screen and say, yeah, that's what my engine's doing. And I don't have a fire, at least for me, with that comfort level. So thanks for being here, everybody. I will see you on the next one. So we're on the bus again, trying our camera system in. Uh, I moved it and I like it a lot better. You can see everything I need to see. It's working awesome. I love the angle. I can see the coil distributor, fuel pump, my belt, modular carburetor. I can see pretty much everything I need to see. Provided I have catastrophic failure, I can watch it happen in real time. <laughs> cool.